I'm Leon Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday Tone Tip. On today's video, we are using the public beta release for firmware 9 on the FM3. I will link that in the video description if you want to try it yourself. And I've got a strat in my hands. What I want to talk about today is something that I just ran into doing a gig, and that is getting this guitar to work with one of my presets. Now, this is a much brighter guitar than the kind of humbucker equipped guitars that I'm used to using. And I want to show you a few very quick tips and tricks that you can use in your presets to get around this. Now, the most obvious fix has nothing to do with the fractal. And if your guitar has a tone control, uh, I'd encourage you to use it. At the moment, I've got the ODS 100 clean set up with my free cab IR and a little bit of the large room reverb on here. Now, on the bridge humbucker on this guitar, I've got this kind of nice low gain crunch going on, but on the neck single coil, uh, to my ears anyway, it's a bit bright. So the first thing that I could do is just turn the tone control for the neck pickup down. We'll hear bridge humbucker, then the neck pickup wide open, then with the neck pickup tone control turned out. <laughs> So that's a pretty easy fix on there. Another thing that I could do, let's say I didn't have a tone control and let's say I just wanted to tweak the preset for a particular guitar or a particular pickup on the guitar uh, would be to adjust the amp controls. Again, super obvious, a really obvious one with a bright sounding Strat or Tele style guitar is to turn the bright switch off. <laughs> Now, I personally call that the bite control on there because it actually impacts the gain structure on most amps. It's particularly apparent on, say, Marshall style models like Plexis and JCM 800s in there. To me, the bright cap is part of the thing that makes those amps great tonally. So I'm going to leave the bright on over here. You can also hear that it kind of took all the nice bite and crunch out of that bridge position on there. So what I would want to do is actually just set up a block that can kind of compensate for this pickup. And let's say I wanted to make it sound a little bit more like a humbucker pickup. Here's one way I would do it. And we're just going to use my blocks library over here. This one is linked in the video description. I've used it in lots of different videos and I've got a video, actually multiple videos talking about it. I will have another one coming up as well, which adds some more blocks. So these particular settings can be found in my blocks library. They are called single coil to humbucker. And let's have a listen to what it does to this really bright neck single coil on here. This is super interesting. <laughs> Now that works really nicely. And for me, what I like about that is it doesn't take out too much of the guitar's character in there. Like say, you know, if I turn the tone control down too much it can get kind of really dull. If I turn the bright switch off on the amp or I change the settings on the amp, uh, obviously that's gonna affect what I liked about all the other positions on there. But if I was just gonna play a particular part with this pickup, I can turn this parametric EQ on and off depending on the part that I'm playing. So I can like switch up, I can engage the PEQ and I can have those fatter settings on there if I want them, of course, with a given amp. You could do the opposite. And I have done videos on here before showing how you can make a humbucker sound more like a single call. The only thing about this is essentially what I did was I used the tone match block in the Axe FX3 and a parametric EQ and I kind of tuned the parametric EQ until I got a very flat reference signal 
on the tone match. So that's why this block looks so weird. And these settings are probably a little bit hard to remember if you just wanna plug them in. So here's what I've been doing recently. This is kind of a simplified version of this parametric EQ. You can kind of see on here, basically the most important controls here, there's this low shelf on here with a frequency kind of around 2K. And then everything sort of rolls off past uh, what is this around 3k it picks up a little bit and then we've got some extra high-end information uh, everything above 10k in here i don't think is going to make too much of a difference anyway so what i've been doing this is really easy to remember because in the parametric we're just going to use band one and band five over here is we're going to crank the frequency on this stock shelving filter all the way up to 2k so you just turn that one all the way up i like to add about two to three dB of gain on there. And then we're gonna use the very last band in here, band five. We're gonna set that to be a blocking type in here. So this is gonna be a low pass filter. You can play around with the slope if you want, but I've set that one to around 3K. Let's have a listen to what this does, again, to our very bright neck single coil. <laughs> Actually really like that. Now we'll hear it side by side with those kind of uh, very complicated five band settings that I had dialed in. It's awesome that you can dial these in uh, and get really accurate results as kind of a pickup match or a pickup simulator, but it is nice having these simplified settings in here. So let's hear them just by changing between channel B, the settings from my blocks library, and then this kind of easy to remember version of it. <laughs> Another situation where this might be handy would be if you've got a backup guitar that sounds radically different to your main guitar. For example, let's say I was gigging with the Gibson ES-335 that I've been using for the last couple of Tuesday tone tips in here, and I had an amp dialed in perfectly for that, but I had to use this Strat as my backup guitar. I'd simply place this parametric EQ first in chain. And what I would use it is I would use the scene ignore function on here so that across all eight scenes, when this is engaged, if I bypass this parametric EQ, or say assign it to a foot switch and I turn it off, then it's not going to do anything across all of my scenes. But let's say I break a string and I need to grab this guitar. What I would do is I would engage this block to kind of compensate for the different tonality of this guitar. And then across all eight scenes in my presets, it would stay on. And again, I would place it right over here first in chain so that essentially it acts as like a guitar compensator. Furthermore, I could turn the level up or down to compensate between different guitars in there. Let's say I wanted a bit more of a kick out of my Strat and let's say I was using something uh, like a JCM 800 over here. So let's have a listen to what that does. We'll hear first the bridge humbucker wide open and then I'm gonna go to the neck single coil. I'm gonna engage this pickup compensator. <laughs> And again, a very straightforward process in there. Just take that very first stock shelving filter, turn the frequency all the way up, add maybe 3 dB of gain, and then go, you know, 3K, 4K with a blocking filter in band five. You can crank the level up if you want a bit more of a boost out of that. And this is a great way to fatten up the sound of a guitar with single coils or something that is overly bright, whether it's for clean sounds or for dirty sounds on there. Check the video description if you would like my free IR 
and my blocks as well as a breakdown of this particular lesson. Let me know if you have any requests for future Tuesday Tone Tips and I will see you all on the next one. Thanks so much for watching.